Murphy's Brewery in Grok, celebrating this year their 125th anniversary. With deep affection and recollection. Pensioner Paddy Barrett was a 12-year-old office boy with the company when they celebrated their 50th anniversary in 1906. Good Thanks very much. I'll see you again next week, okay? That's lovely. Bye for now. Bye. Well, Paddy, it isn't exactly this is your life, but it was a very interesting life you had here. When did you first join here? 1904. 1904. It's a long time ago. How old were you then, Paddy? Ten years. Ten years of age? Ten years of age. And what job had you then? As an office boy here. Now, the wages in, in those days were very small, weren't they? Very small. To me, I say they had only about 16, 17 shillings a week. Right? Okay. And what about yourself? I, I had eight shillings a week. Eight shillings? Eight shillings a week in office point. Can you remember at all the, the price of a pint in those days? A pint was two pence, and a pint of stove was two pence here. Was there a great sense of friendship and comradeship here in the old days? Would you Tell me, Paddy, are, are you a man to take a pint yourself? Well, now and then, you know, like I know, I love it, but still I take a pint now and then. And I suppose there was a free tap here in the old days? Oh, there was a free tap, and anybody who ordered any stout here, they get a docket, and I was taken up to the free tap above. Some, if they ordered one of, say, two kids, they would get a quarter stout on it, or a quarter pint on it. Can you remember why that was discontinued? That was during the war years. We had then see got very scarce, and the publicans were all rationed here, they say. So they had to come in, then they have, they have kept them stored. With my bells of Shandon, that sounds so grand. History lives on in this old brewery. It takes three tons of coal two hours to boil 18,000 gallons of wort. An age-old process, brewing stout by live fire. All under the general supervision of Nashloft foreman, Christy Murphy. Murphy's is well known to have a kick in it. Ah, but this is ridiculous. There is a sense of timeless wonder that such antique equipment still exists and works, doing things the traditional way. And this is the product. Despite the rumours that brewery workers elsewhere have been said to drown happily in vats such as this one, employees at this brewery are sure-footed beggars and bowlers, steady on the feet, clear in the head and unperturbed by such idle gossip. How long are you involved now in this particular part of the business? Well, 39 years here, but I was here earlier in the, you know, and the uh, shift through all of it and brought back again. Like. Yeah. So I'm here for a busy time now, about six years, seven years. Are you happy to be working in this old part of the brewery? Oh, of course I am. <laughs> oh, you, tell me this, what do you think of the, the actual stout here? Would you say it is better than the stuff that's made across in the, in the modern part? As an old timer no, what comment would you make to that? Oh, actually, no. <laughs> I make it. <laughs> Made and directed by William Spence, Cork Street Foundry and Engineering Works in Dublin. Well, this mash tun here was until very recently the largest of its kind in the world. And I must admit it came as no surprise at all to me to learn that William Spence and company have long since gone out of business. Because when you made something like that in the old days, you made it to last. Not only that big one here, but also its it's little brother, as it were, this chap here. And you can just take a look and guess the size of that. Brewers over the centuries have been notoriously conservative in maintaining their ancient equipment for some very good reasons. They had the product, they had the beer, they had the stout, and they wished to maintain it exactly as it was. 
and Murphy's here in Ladies Well in Cork have been no exception. It began as a small family company and have expanded recently. 7% or thereabouts of the stout market here in Cork, 30% in Munster and some 8 or 9% on the national sales. But as I said, conservative, rather like ourselves here in Cork. There's one sure thing about it. It works. Christy Murphy, a man clearly at home in the old brewery, might find this modern extension little more than a clinical laboratory exercise, almost eliminating the human element, and by comparison to the old ways of doing things, lacking in heart. All is mechanised efficiency here, the modern face of a tradition founded by James J. Murphy, Victorian entrepreneur and gentleman, a colourful character who bailed the Munster Bank out of bankruptcy in the 1880s, for which he was described as a man of action in an age of chatterboxes. No longer today a family concern, Murphy's is an expanding enterprise, part owned by the workers facing the 80s with old skills and new technology. But history is written here. Paddy Barrett earned two and fourpence a day in 1904. Part of that living history, man and boy, a Murphy's man. The traffic was very light in the old days. You had trams running and you had so many motor cars around the city. There was all the horse vehicles which you was going around here and there. It's very light. Modern traffic doesn't bother me at all. As I generally walk in town. Where you going to? Perhaps the help to continue to walk two miles every Thursday to collect his pension. Does he know where he's going? Of course he does. In many ways, for Paddy Barrett, it's like going home. 